What's going on YouTube and welcome back to another awesome video and thank you so much for all your love and support. It is so much appreciated. Please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't as well as follow my Instagram. That is the place to keep up to date with all the news and information. Today we're down at the facility. I want to talk to you guys a little bit today about uh, heads versus visuals. So. It's one of the biggest questions I get on my Instagram pretty much daily. Should I buy heads or should I buy visuals? And I wanna to touch on that a little bit today and give you my opinion on what I think is best for, for you guys. But before we do that, I just wanna get into some cleaning because Friday is the big clean day here at the shop. So we're gonna change water dishes, get all the bins cleaned out, make sure that we put down some fresh paper and get all that set up. So let's get right to it. So here behind me, just like the last video, I've got my pail, which I use to empty all the water into. And then I've got my fresh water behind that. And just for efficiency, it's always good to have tubs that are already ready to go. So if I take up these top thins here, you'll see that there's already a fresh piece of paper inside them. They are clean. So it makes it really easy when I open up all these tubs, I can just instantly switch the snake over to a brand new uh, clean tub and take the other one and clean it off and get that done. So what do you say? Let's get right into this. So it's not just me that likes to clean on Fridays. We've got Austin here, which is Billy Rose's helper. He's going through all the bins, taking them out and cleaning them as well. It's a lot of work, but uh, we've actually got a couple of really nice snakes here that uh, he's cleaning out. So why don't we check them out real quick? So right here, we got an MJ Xanthic Pied. So Xanthic. a Xanthic Pied. So what, what, what's that? It's a MJ Xanthic line. It's originated here in Canada from Mark Mandic. And it's not compatible with the VPI line, but it looks a lot better than VPI, in my opinion, and other people's. So, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the Xanthic just removes the color yeah, out of the snake, right? It removes the yellow pigment and it brings in more of this dark black. And then we have, in contrast right here, the albino pied. It's just a regular albino pied, not a dreamsicle. It's really cool. But the albino pied is very similar. Do you have a dreamsicle we can compare against? Yeah, I'll get her out right now. Here it is. So here's the dreamsicle and there's the albino pied. So basically in the albino pied you have more whites coming in and here you have more lavenders and you have some green colors coming in here. And, and these are sub-adults, right? Yeah, so these are both around 700 to 900 grams and they should both be breeding next year. They're both female. All three of them actually are. Those are beautiful. Yeah. Tell you guys, you guys already know by my channel that I've got a couple of dream schools myself and they're one of my favorite snakes. And it's pretty much the first snakes that caught my eye that really got me into this whole hobby. So just getting to see them like this when they're a little bit larger and how they still retain a lot of coloration, it's just really cool. So I'm really excited to get working with that. But Austin, I don't wanna keep uh, bugging you. I know you got a lot of work to do, so let's get on to the next step. So now that we actually got all the water dishes uh, replaced inside all the bins and all the snakes moved over into clean tubs, now we gotta take care and clean all the old tubs. Another common question I get is, how do you clean and what do you use? So I'm gonna show you guys a couple pieces of equipment that we have here. So the first one is this awesome blue chemicals right here. This is a veterinary grade uh, cleaner that we use to actually clean the tubs. So I know a lot of people have different uh, ways of doing it. Some people use Dawn, some people use soap. We actually don't use that. Sometimes it can leave a little bit of a smell and a little bit of residue behind on the tubs and can throw the snakes off a little bit and make them go off food or stress them out. So we find that using veterinary grade cleaner that is completely disinfectant, so removes all bacteria out of the tubs and doesn't leave behind the smell and gets all of the stains and stuff out, is it's a great product to use. So this is what we use over here to actually clean the tubs. Another question I get quite frequently is what do we use to line the bottom of the bins? So here we actually use unprinted newspaper. Not sure about the US, but in Canada there's an awesome company called Uline. It's at U, literally, Line. You can visit our website, you can order boxes upon boxes of this awesome stuff. It's very cost effective, but it's also very clean. It retains moisture very well, and it soaks up uh, any excrement from the animals uh, very well as well. So 
we just find that it's a very clean way to keep the tubs clean and, and disinfected and, and doesn't allow for mold or any other bacteria to grow. You can use a variety of different stuff, it's just how we do it here and it uh, works very well for us. So let's get right into this part of the cleanup. Now we gotta clean all these bins. Now getting to see those dreamsicles when they're a little bit larger is really fantastic as you can see there's a clear difference between that and when they're much younger. So my dreamsicle right here, which is a dreamsicle head clown, well she's not really a hatchling anymore, she's about two, three hundred grams, but nevertheless you can see that the camera's not really picking it up, but there is a lot more orange to the color and it does fade out a little bit over time, but it still retains some bright yellows and it still looks great. So it definitely is one of my favorite snakes and there's def reason behind that and that's just how awesome the yellow and the oranges work off the white. So it's really cool to get to see the difference between the two and, and see how they evolve over time. Now, if you want to take the dream skull a step further, you've got this beautiful girl right here. That happens to be a yellow belly dream skull. It really enhances the yellows and turns them a lot more orange. And you know, the camera is picking up a little bit. I can see on my screen, but definitely not to the extent of what this is in person. If you guys go to my Instagram, you'll be able to see a much better picture, but when you add the yellow belly, it just really transformed that snake into something that is just mind blowing. So again, just another evolution of the dreamsicle and how you can just take it a step further. Justin has also done it even further than that. He's created an orange dream, a yellow belly dreamsicle, which I'm gonna be hoping to produce as well. So just kind of elevates those colors and just brings it out. And it just makes the snake look absolutely gorgeous. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of insight on the whole cleaning process and I hope you guys liked a couple of the snakes I showed you. So now let's get into the next topic of the video and that is should I buy heads or should I buy visuals? Now this is really a difficult uh, topic to talk about because everybody has different goals and there's a lot of variables that might dictate the uh, best way to answer that question but let's just use you know a general basis. So when it comes to funding that's the number one thing that you got to understand is how much money do you have to spend? If you are on a limited budget and you can't afford to buy a whole bunch of multi-gene recessive visual females and equally get a multi-gene recessive male, the best way to start out would be to buy yourself two or three quality heads because in general, you can get two, sometimes three het females to the cost of one visual recessive female. So obviously, increased production, more eggs and more chances uh, usually works out good. The second part is heads are such a great tool because when it comes to experimenting with new genes down the line, you don't necessarily always want to take your best quality female as a guinea pig to try something new out. You know, if you've got a vision or idea that you want to mix a couple of genes in in the future, it's always good to have a head on the side that you can use for that experiment while still producing some really awesome quality stuff with your visual down the road. So that would be another benefit to that. The next thing is you know, having your genes locked in. So for you to go out and spend, you know, thousands of dollars buying multi-gene recessive females, and then, you know, a year or two down the line when you're ready to buy your male, you can only afford to get, you know, a het male or something. It's not really gonna be a great thing and it's not gonna be a great outcome because you can't guarantee that all those females are going to produce their first year. You can't guarantee that all those females are gonna produce every year. It would really be unfortunate if you had a beautiful, you know, let's use one of my girls as an example. So my pastel yellow belly and she pied. It would be really unfortunate if I didn't have an equal or better quality male to go to her. And now she decides to take that year off and now I can't get those genes back out of her because she's not producing. So that would be a really unfortunate situation to be in and it would really put you 12 months behind. So that's why if you can't afford to do multi-females of multiple genes, visual recessives, then having a bunch of single gene heads on the shelf are really gonna be powerful because guess what? If you've got all those genes that I just listed locked into your male and two out of five of your girls decide not to produce, you can still take that male and move him into three other bins and still capitalize on all those awesome genes that you have locked in. So that's how I would do it. I'm even, I've even made a couple of mistakes with that. You know, I really discounted the 
value of having hats on the shelf because I've, most of my stuff is visual. And now I've just started buying some hat stuff that's coming in at the end of the month. So uh, it's a debatable question. A lot of people have different ideas. You really have to have a clear goal and a clear idea and make sure that you guys set out a specific budget of how much you want to spend for an animal and go ahead and, and, and just get that ready. So just to sum it all up again, if you're on a limited income and you want to get the best production possible, two, three, maybe even four amazing single gene heads. And when I mean single gene heads, you can go get, for example, an orange dream hep pied, a yellow belly hep pied, uh, just a normal hep pied, you know, and you can have this spread out across three different snakes. And then when you go and buy your male later on to pair to them, then you can go get yourself a four or five gene pied male, absolute stunner. You wanna spend all the money and put it all into that male. And now you can start moving him across to different females. And you know what? If one or two of those girls decides not to lay or not to produce that year, that's okay because you've got all your best genes locked into your male and you can go ahead and move him into another bin and still capitalize. I hope that gives you guys a little bit of insight. Obviously this topic could go on a lot longer, but I'm just kind of generalizing it for you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, please smash that like button and make sure you subscribe and follow me on Instagram. That's the fastest way to get a hold of me. And I'll see you guys on another video next week.